Remember, a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. Tonight, from Hollywood, the makers of Hallmark greeting cards bring you Jane Wyman in Helen Rose Hull's Play Shuttered Doors on the Hallmark Playhouse. Each week, Hallmark will bring you Hollywood's greatest stars in outstanding stories chosen by one of the world's best-known authors, the distinguished novelist, Mr. James Hilton. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is James Hilton. Every now and then on our Hallmark Playhouse, we try to give you something really different, and tonight I think we shall succeed. Our choice is a story called Clay Shuttered Doors by Miss Helen R. Hull. Maybe you'd call this a ghost story, or maybe you'd just use a term we all use pretty loosely. Maybe it's a case of mind over matter. You decide for yourself. As for me, I can't remember a story of its kind that impressed me more. If you feel about it as I do, I think you'll listen to it with the sort of absorption that a good ghost story gives, but with something else added, a moral that all of us could well learn. And I think you'll agree, too, that Miss Hull has proved herself adept at the creation of a mood. We are especially fortunate tonight in having with us to play in the starring role that very fine Hollywood actress who has been winning so many praises lately, Miss Jane Wyman. And now, Frank Goss, have you a few words about Hallmark? There are Hallmark cards for every memorable occasion on your calendar. For birthdays, anniversaries, holidays. Yes, for every occasion that calls for remembrance, for a friendly greeting, a word of good cheer, an expression of sympathy. There is a Hallmark card that says just what you want to say, the way you want to say it. And that identifying name on the back, Hallmark. Well, that says you cared enough to send the very best. <laughs> Hallmark Playhouse, presenting Helen Rose Hull's Clay Shuttered Doors and starring Jane Wyman. Life sifts through our hands like the sand in an hourglass. But where does life end and death begin? The last grains fall, one by one, minute, almost invisible. And even time is a cheat for all its relentlessness. It was my last supper on Cape Cod. I'd spent all my summers there as a girl, even before my marriage to Wynne Corson, before the birth of my son, Fletcher. I hated the autumn. Hated the thought of returning to the large house Wynne had purchased on Long Island. But most of all, I hated leaving Mary, the one friend who remained exclusively mine for a lifetime. Don't be so pensive, Thalia. We'll be seeing each other after all. I'll be living right in Manhattan. Oh, I know, Mary, but it's been such a wonderful summer. So quiet and relaxing. Even Wynne is different when he comes up for the weekend. You know, he's been working so hard on this merger. If it goes through, he'll be the biggest distributor in the automobile industry. Does the genius of the automobile industry mind my riding into town with you? Oh, no. Sometimes I don't think Wynne approves of me. Nonsense. Wynne's very fond <laughs> of you, just as I am. Well, Here he comes. Charles, ready? I've told Charles to take care of locking things up. No, oh, it's raining like fury. It means a rough drive. I'd like to get started. Oh, last minute me. I have a few things to pack yet. Will you excuse me, Wynne? Thalia? Of sure. course, darling. It won't take me a minute. Shall I pour you a cup of tea, Wynne? Tea? Oh, for heaven's sake, Thalia. Let's get started, huh? Oh, darling, don't you think you ought to put the chains on the tires? The roads are so slippery and wet. No, I don't. I'm not going to listen to those things clanging all the way into town. Where's Fletcher? He's all ready. Well, see if you can't hurry Mary a bit, will you? She knows we're leaving. I know. You know how she is, Wynne. I envy her. Well, I don't. She's completely without purpose. You've outgrown her, darling. What good can she do you? Why, she's my friend, Wynne. Ever since we were children. I've never wanted anything from her but that. Well, see if you can't get a little speed along with it. Look, Mother, look! We're on the Brooklyn 
Brooklyn Bridge. I want to see the cliff dwellers. Cliff dwellers? That's Wynne's name for people who live in apartment houses. <laughs> Ouch! I hit my nose in the glass. Why doesn't Father stay in the line? That other car almost smacked us. Your father is perfectly capable of driving the car. Oh, Wynne better get back in line at that. If a cop ever sees him over on this side, you... Oh, Mary, he's going ahead in the wrong lane. Maybe he sees an opening up ahead he can slip into. Oh, but there are cars coming. To... Those headlights. Win, Mary, get down, Fletcher. <laughs> Blinded me with those lights, you imbecile. Coming out of your lane like that on wet pavement. Mother! Mother, get Fletcher, out! Fletcher, Fletcher, there. Win, <laughs> win, come here. What's the matter, Mary? You aren't hurt? Failure. Her head must have hit the door. Oh, I'll lift her out. Now, don't get hysterical. This is bad enough. Now, let me through here. Let come me on, through failure. here. I'm a doctor. Now, don't do that. Don't move her, young man. I think it's just shock. Let me in there. Hey, she's my wife. She's just fainted, hasn't she? That's all. That's it, isn't it? Blow on the temple. Death must have been instantaneous. I'm... Very sorry, sir. Your wife is dead. Mother, no, mother. she isn't. No, no, you no, fool, no, she no, isn't. No, 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 wake up. Wake up, open your eyes. Open them, you must. Listen to me, dear. You weren't hurt. You can't leave me. You can't. Dearest, you... You can't leave me. I knew it. I heard you calling me, Wynn. I... I'm sorry, I... You a doctor, you fat little fool. Get out of my way. His mother... His mother all right? The doctor said yes, that... Yes, Fletcher, she's all right. There's a cab in line here, Mary. I'll take failure. You bring Fletcher in another. I don't want him upsetting her. My mother isn't dead. Is she? Is she, Mary? I... <laughs> no, Fletcher. No, she isn't dead. Come in. Are you all right, Thalia? Why shouldn't she be all right? Nothing but shock, that's all. I'm all right, Mary. Wynne says I'm all right. He'd know. I sent Fletcher to his room, Wynn. He's quite upset. I think you'd better go in and talk to him before you bring him in here. Uh, yes. I guess I'd better at that. You'll call me if you want anything, dear. Yes, Wynn. If I need anything that you have to give, I'll call you. You really all right there, yeah? Why, yes. Wynn loves me. He called me. He needs me. It's so hard to get back in. What did you say, dear? I'll be myself again as soon as I've rested a little. Don't go away, Mary. Please stay. Of course I will. I... Oh, hail you. Your hand is so cold. I'm chilled, that's all. That's all, Mary. I'll be all right. Let me rest until dinner is prepared. Yes, dear. Rest. Rest. Tell the cook dinner is delicious, Henry. Bring me some strong coffee, plenty of it. Yes, sir. And I can use some coffee after this evening, eh, Mary? Between you and that doctor and Fletcher, I was scared stiff. But I know my girl. Look at her. Beautiful as ever. I still think it wouldn't be amiss to call in a doctor and have him... No. No. I... I don't want a doctor. Of course she doesn't want a doctor. One idiot's enough for today. What do you want to do? Have another one come in here and tell Thalia that she's... That she's... That I'm dead? Yes, that other one, I... Don't even think he knew how to take a pulse. 
Perhaps Mary should see a doctor, though, Wynn. Thank you. I wasn't injured. Wait a minute. Thalia has a good idea. After all, you were a passenger in the car. You don't owe me anything, Wynn. I'm quite all right. Well, that's good, good. But if anything does come up, let me know, huh? Why, Wynn? Why? Well, good heavens, Thalia. I don't want any claims or any publicity about the accident. I'm sure Mary understands that, even though she isn't as close to it as you are. As close to what, Wynn? Well, this merger, dear. If anybody had been hurt, it could have killed the whole deal. Papers would pick it up, and you know how people talk. Wrecking my own car. There's always the suspicion that you've been drinking. Yes. I guess your merger could have been killed on that bridge. I knew you'd understand when you thought about it. Yes, Wynn. I understand. Perfectly. I think I'd better go. I, I haven't even seen my new apartment yet, you know. We'll have Walter drive you. Of course. I'll have him get the other car out immediately. You'll come out often, Mary? Anytime you want me, Thalia. And if there's anything I can do, tell me. You're my oldest friend. You know I love you. Love. That's a strange word, Mary. There are two kinds of love. One is like a cut flower that withers and dies. The other is like your love, Mary, strong like a tree. Make sure you get that kind of love, your kind of love. Love like winds is helpless and mute. It never shouts out across great time and space. With people like Wynn, only fear and self-desire are strong. In a moment, James Hilton will return to bring you the second act of Clay Shuttered Doors, starring Jane Wyman. But first, I guess nearly every grown-up likes to make children happy. And so I want to tell you about Hallmark Dolls, for you should see how any little girl's eyes light up with joy when you give her one of these unusual dolls to add to her collection. There are now 24 dolls to select from, the newest being a series of Hallmark Dolls of the Nations, each in costume representing a different nation. There's Anne of England, Antoinette of France, Katrinka of Holland, Maria of Mexico, Rita of Brazil, Sing Toy of China, John, the Royal Canadian Mountie, and from our own Wild West, Cowboy Joe. Costumes are in full color, front and back. There's a real plume in each hat, and they stand up like real little people, eight inches high. Inside each Hallmark doll is a clever rhyme story about the nation it represents, a story as educational as a lesson in school, only twice as much fun, because it tells how children live in another land. Hallmark dolls of the nations and the other Hallmark dolls make wonderful gifts for birthdays as party favors, to cheer up a little friend who's ill, or just to remind some little girl that you are thinking of her. They're as easy to send as a greeting card and cost only 25 cents each. Or for a dollar, you get a beautiful doll collector's album with two dolls already in it. Find Hallmark dolls at the same friendly store where you buy your Hallmark greeting cards. And now we continue with Act Two of Helen Rose Hull's Clay Shuttered Doors, starring Jane Wyman. Cruelty is the child of despair, an orphan we leave on the doorstep of those we love, because others won't take it. Perhaps I should have left Mary her illusions. We might have been closer while the last tiny grains of sand are falling in the hourglass. I was lonely without her. Lonely in the midst of wind's crowded life. With a loneliness that only the... the... lost can know. A month went by. Two, three... And then I wrote to her, and she came. Mary! 
Mary, I'm glad to see you. Come in. Thank you. There you wrote me. She sounded distressed. Well, ever since the accident, she's been nervous. Not herself a good part of the time. People have been mentioning it. I told you she needed attention, Win. Why does she refuse to see a doctor? I don't know. She's full of strange whims. She's got me jumpy, too. I came home one evening, and I could have sworn that I saw that little man from the bridge. The doctor? Yes. I thought I saw him leaving the house as I drove up. The servant said no, and when I asked Thalia, she just laughed. But she isn't right. She, she locks herself in her room, sometimes for days, unless we have a party or some social obligation. And she's fine. She sparkles. I'm always fine, Wynne. Mary. Dear Mary. Oh, Thalia, Thalia. Oh, you've been ill. You're so thin and so pale. Nothing that makeup won't fix, as Wynne would say. I haven't said good night to Fletcher. Come up with me. Then we can visit. Excuse us, Wynne. Of course. Who is Fletcher? He's getting big and gangly. Doing very nicely in school. It sounds very much like you. Yes, too much. I wish he were more like Wynne. The earth was made for people like Wynn, Mary. You've helped him. He wouldn't be so important without you. I, I think he knows that. Yes, he does. He knows that. Fletcher is in this room now. We gave him a bigger space to grow in. He liked it so well when his room was right next to yours. Boys become independent quite suddenly sometimes. Come in. Hello, Fletcher. Mary, <laughs> Mary! Hello, Mother. I came up to say good night to you, dear. Good night, Mother. I haven't seen Fletcher for so long, Thalia. May I stay with him for a moment? Well, all right. I'll see you in the library, Mary. Good night, son. Good night. Mary! Mary! Oh, boy, Fletcher, <laughs> what's the matter? Why can't we go back to the Cape, Mary? Why can't but we? But, Fletcher, here now, stop that crying. You go back to the Cape again in the summer? I want to go back now. Mother is different there. She she doesn't love me anymore. She doesn't even kiss me goodnight. She probably forgot just because I'm here. No, she never does. Not since we came back. Your mother isn't well, Fletcher, and she has so much to do. Then why did she leave me my dog? She sent him away. She sent Nugs away. She sent Nugs away? <laughs> but your mother loved Nugs. Was he injured or sick? No, he wasn't. She just didn't like him anymore. Nugs knew it, too. He knew she was going to send him away because he growled at her and he ran away and hid under the bed. I see. I see. <laughs> Look, Fletcher, tell you what, I'll find out where she sent Nugs and I'll get him and take him to live with me and then you can come over and see him, all right? Will you, Mary? Will you? Yes, Fletcher, tomorrow. Now you go to bed. All right, Mary. Mary? Would... Would you kiss me goodnight? Oh, Fletcher, Fletcher. <laughs> Well, Mary, you and Fletcher are a new old acquaintance? Yes, we. Why do you look at me so strangely, Mary? Why, well, you. You look beautiful, Thalia. A few minutes ago, you were so. so white. You're just too imaginative. You've been worrying about me too much. I've been thinking of sending Thalia to Europe for a good rest, Mary. After the merger goes through, of course. Yes. I can't leave until that merger goes through, Mary. I'm very important until then. Thalia, why do you have to read new meanings into my words? I only suggested a vacation for you. After the merger. H how's the merger going, Win? I can tell you that, Mary. It's going very nicely. I handle it, really. We entertain the lords of industry at dinner. And in some mysterious way, vast corporations become one. It makes a wife. A necessity? You know you'll love it. Invite Mary to the next shebang and let her see how well you do it. Yes. You must come to my next performance, Mary. The play goes on beautifully. 
Especially since nobody was hurt in the accident on the bridge. Really, Thalia, I think I've had enough of that. I have some work in my study. Mary, I... I... Thalia, oh, Thalia. My head, Mary, it... It aches. It aches so. Oh, you poor darling. Thursday night, another dinner. I can't... I can't endure it. Help me, Mary. You must. I need you now more than I ever did when I... more than I ever did before. I'll do anything you say. Come to dinner Thursday. Say you will. I'll come. And forgive me for tonight, I... I think you'd better go home now. If you stay, I might tell you things you wouldn't care to live with. I'm sorry I didn't think to ask an extra man, Mary. Very thoughtless of me. Your wonderful dinner indicates a great deal of thought. Besides, it gives me a chance to sit next to you. I'm glad of that, too. Hello, dear. J.B. is talking to you. Oh, sorry, J.B. You're one man I always listen to. What did you say? Well, I just said that you were more charming than ever. I, I told Wynne that you're just about the prettiest wife in the whole automobile industry. And I'll stick to that until my wife gets me home. <laughs> <laughs> Sam. Yeah. Sam, well, everybody's in such a good mood. Why don't we let the girls in on a little secret, huh? Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. All right, quiet, everybody. Quiet. Sam has the floor. Ladies and gentlemen, I have the pleasure of announcing the merger of all our automobile interests into the new Regal 8 Corporation with Mr. Wynn Corson as our great president. Right, now, what do you think of that? So, <laughs> it's settled... It's finally done. Look at Wynne. He's beaming. I've never seen him like that. Neither have I. Mary, neither have I. Uh, now, now, hold on, folks. Hold on. I've got a little toast to propose. Let's drink to Thalia Corson, the real power behind this boy of ours. That's right. That's right. That's right. Thank you, J.B. And thanks to all of you. Because... I deserve that toast more than any of you will ever know. What do you mean by that? Failure. You've got your merger win, and now I've got my freedom. I. Failure. Help me, Mary. Please, please, everybody. My wife hasn't been well. Please go on. I'll rejoin you in a minute. I'll get you upstairs in your bed, Thalia. Just hold on. Dear Mary. Here, here, let me help. You help me win? I think you might have saved this for when we were alone, Thalia. Telling me you want your freedom right in front of my guests. I won't have a divorce at this time. Do you hear? I won't have it. Go back to your guests, Wynn. I'm not going to divorce you. I told you to watch your nerves. I'll be up to see you later. <sighs> Mary? Telephone number on the cover of the book. Call, call a doctor. The one from the bridge. What's the matter with you? Why did you leave her alone? Well, don't stand here crying. Go in. Thalia, let me in, you hear? Don't, Thalia. don't, the doctor's in there. Doctor, what doctor? That fool from the bridge? Yes, Mr. Corson. The fool from the bridge. If you've disturbed her, I'll... Mr. Corson. You were the one who disturbed her. But you never will again. She... She's dead? She died months ago. There on the bridge. You called to her, and she came back because she thought you wanted her. I'd suggest you stay out of this room. I, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll make the necessary arrangements. 
I'm sure you will win. You can arrange anything, can't you? Well, what do you mean? I'll tell you when. I told Mary what it was that called me back from the dead. I told her about love. Your kind of love. The love that leaves you alone forever. You can't call me back this time when your love is helpless and mute. It can never shut out or shout out across great time and space. Only your fear and self-desire are strong. And I mourn for you when because they are all you will ever have. Before James Hilton and Jane Wyman return, I'd like to remind you of the Hallmark date book waiting for you at the Friendly Store where you find Hallmark greeting cards. This useful little book has a space for every day of the year with room to jot down things to do that day. A place for names and addresses of people to remember on important days like birthdays and anniversaries. You'll use your Hallmark date book for all sorts of reminders. Meetings, appointments, bridge luncheons, perhaps even when to plant early lettuce. But most important, it will help you strengthen those ties of friendship that mean so much. Now, to get your Hallmark date book, just ask for it. It's yours without obligation from the friendly store where you find Hallmark greeting cards. Here again is James Hilton. Perhaps the story we've just heard serves to prove that love is deathless, or perhaps it's the sort of story each listener should interpret for himself. Anyhow, I'd like to say for myself that I can readily understand why it is that we hear so much lately about the magnificent acting ability of Miss Jane Wyman. Miss Wyman, for the entire Hallmark family, our thanks for a gripping performance this evening. Thank you, Mr. Hilton. It was an honor to be on the Hallmark Playhouse. And I do want you to know, however, that I'm really an ordinary person, even though I may be cast sometimes as a deaf girl or the kind of woman I portrayed in tonight's story. But... Playing the part of unfortunate people has its advantages. You come to realize how important it is to have friends and how necessary a little thoughtfulness is in this world. That's why I'm especially fond of your Hallmark people and your fine Hallmark cards. You have a tradition of friendship and thoughtfulness. Thank you, Miss Wyman, for your compliment. We Hallmark people try to make that our guiding inspiration. Ladies and gentlemen, may I invite you to join us next week when we present Christopher Morley's great story, Parnassus on Wheels, starring an actress who not only has a successful screen career, but has performed with notable success on the New York stage, Miss Ruth Hussey. And the following week, a story of dedication and inspiration, Catherine Haviland Taylor's The Failure, starring one of Hollywood's outstanding character actors, Mr. Ward Bond. And the week after that, we have what I think could probably be called a scoop, a truly great story about Abraham Lincoln based on Carl Sandburg's The Prairie Years and starring one of Hollywood's finest actors, Gregory Peck. So make Thursday night your Hallmark Playhouse night. Our director-producer is Dee Engelbach, our music is composed and conducted by Lynn Murray, and our script was adapted by Joel Murcott. So until next Thursday, this is James Hilton saying good night. Look for Hallmark cards that are sold only in stores that have been carefully selected to give you expert and friendly service. Remember, Hallmark cards, when you care enough to send the very best. You'll see a fine Hallmark card illustrated on the January cover of Best Year's Magazine, now on your newsstand. This is Frank Goss saying good night from the Hallmark Playhouse. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.